So roughly three weeks ago while I was on holiday, my credit card was actually stopped due to fraudulent transactions. Now this became a bit of a problem because it meant that I was unable to use my credit card to perform different financial transactions. This was particularly problematic when it came to happy hour. Two for one cocktails, you gotta make the most of it, right? So as a result of that, I tried jumping on the phone and speaking to a customer service representative. Me being in Bali, customer service being in Australia, this presented a bit of a challenge because it meant that one, I was sitting there waiting through extensive wait times and extensive call queues when I really just wanted to double check that everything was going to be okay. Now, this could have been completely avoided if there were smarter solutions in place. This brings us to the conversation that I wanted to have with you today, and that's around how to build a smart virtual agent using Watson Assistant ridiculously quickly. What's happening guys, my name is Nicholas Renard, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can build our very own virtual agent ridiculously quickly with Watson Assistant. This is gonna be a short and sharp demo, I really just wanna give you a bird's eye overview as to how to do this and how to get started. But you're probably thinking, Nick, why on earth should I bother going and learning Watson Assistant or virtual agents or conversational components for that matter? Well, there is an absolute massive market when it comes to doing this and learning these skills for developers. There are huge companies and I'll list some of those on the screen as well as including some of the case studies in the description below. There are a ton of job opportunities when it comes to learning how to build conversational agents, working with natural language processing, because there is a huge rise in unstructured text-based data. This is a huge opportunity for you. When it comes to taking a look as to why you should learn how to do this or why you should implement this for your business, well again, there are huge benefits. Using virtual agents can significantly reduce your cost per transaction and improve your customer experience. This is particularly so if you've got a well set up customer agent, which is what I'm going to show you how to build today. So we'll take a bird's eye view of how to do this using Watson Assistant and using the new actions capability, which makes it so much easier. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, we're gonna keep this one pretty free form and pretty lightweight in my hopes to start producing some shorter bite-sized content to be able to allow people that don't necessarily want a monster tutorial to consume. Okay, so I'm already inside of Watson Assistant and if you're not too sure how to set this up, do check out some of the previous videos that I've done on Watson Assistant, relatively easy to get up and running. Now we're gonna build a very, very simple virtual assistant in this particular case, something that handles a really simple logic gate. But if you do want more tutorials, I do have a much deeper example where we actually go out and build this whole flow. If you want that, hit me up in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to do a full run through. But for now, we're gonna keep it really, really simple. Let's say, for example, a customer comes into our store or comes to our website and they want an answer to a particular question and we're gonna give them a stock canned response back. Let's say, for example, a customer is asking what our nearest location is or what, a, what locations they have in the CBD. So in my particular case, I'm based in Sydney CBD. So we want to be able to handle that particular type of response. Now we could also do things like geotagging and whatnot, but we're going to keep it relatively simple. So I'm inside of the Watson Assistant home screen. So you can see up here, I'm already at home, but on the left-hand side, you've got a whole bunch of different options. You've got the ability to build, preview, deploy and work with your draft environment. And you've also got the ability to analyze different components. Now I'll probably do more tutorials on the other components later on, but for now, the most important section is action. So once you're at the Watson Assistant home screen, all you need to do is go on over to the left-hand side and hit actions. And from here, we can start building our virtual agent. So let's say, for example, the first thing that we want to do is find out what locations our agent has inside or what locations our business has in Sydney CBD. Well, assuming we're already on the created by you section of our actions, we, all we need to do is go on over to here, create new action, and we need to provide the utterance, which is going to determine where our agent goes next or what our agent is trying to respond to. Now, the way that you write these is based on what your customer is likely to say. So the customer might say, um, what are your store locations in Sydney CBD? 
And this could be whatever, right? It could be what are your store locations, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. And we could have a whole bunch of different logic gates to be able to handle this. But keep in mind, the machine learning model that sits behind Watson Assistant is going to be looking at this particular utterance to determine how to actually respond next and whether or not to pick up this particular action. So we're going to hit save. Now we could also go back to that. So back over to this section over here and we can provide more examples of those utterances. So we could go, um, what stores do you have in Sydney? Let's give it another one. Um, so let's hit enter. Uh, what's another one? Where are your stores in Sydney? And the more examples of these particular utterances, the better your agent is going to be able to respond to specific intents or specific customer requests. So our customer is going to ask that, and then we need to respond with something. So we need to go, let's say, for example, uh, at your, our nearest or our nearest store in Sydney, CBD is, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, 100 George Street, Sydney. And then we can choose to end our action. So this is really, really simple, right? So you can see we just provide what our agent is going to detect or try to look at, and then we provide a response. So our assistant is going to reply back and say, our nearest store is Sydney CBD, or our nearest store in Sydney CBD is 100 George Street. And then we can end our action. So that basically means that that is the end of our particular action. So we can hit end action. And we can hit save up here. And this is actually going to begin training our model. Now this happens ridiculously quickly on Watson Assistant. So all we need to then do is hit preview and then we can test it out. So on the left-hand side here on our preview, we can scroll on down. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see that. It's my head covering that. Uh, I'm gonna have to hide me. And let's go and try this out. So we can go, what stores do you have in Sydney CBD? And take a look at that. So our assistant has already gone and responded. Our nearest store in Sydney CBD is 100 George Street, Sydney. So it's already gone and recognized that particular intent and it's gone and resp uh, responded appropriately. So really quickly, we're able to get this up and running. Now, again, we could go and add way more intents or way more actions here. So we could actually close this down and let's try another one. So let's actually go and take a look at that bigger flow that I showed right at the start. So if we go and open up what's an assistant. So let's say we had, we were more like a bank. We might go, I want to withdraw money. Would you like to withdraw from your checking or savings account? And then we have different flow logic based on that. So let's actually start building this one out. We might not go to the end, but let's actually start building this. So let's say our customer might come in and go, I want to withdraw money. Well, let's take a look at how we might build that. Again, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new action. So we're over here, we're going to hit new action. Let me just enable myself again. So we want to say, let's take a look at that. So I want to withdraw money. So this is the full flow. We're going to focus on the start because that's where we start. So I want to withdraw money. I want to withdraw money. So if you keep in mind, the first action that we created didn't have any logic, right? So we just purely went and replied with our nearest location is Sydney CBD. So again, relatively straightforward. It's almost like providing a direct answer. But now what we want to do is ask the customer a question before we provide a response. So we want to determine whether or not our customer wants to withdraw from their checking or savings account. So let's go and do that. So would you like to withdraw from your checking or savings account? So this is what our assistant is going to reply with. So remember, we start with an utterance or an intent, which is this. We then provide a response based on our assistant and we can customize this to whatever we want. We can grab the action variables, so on and so forth. I've just gone and deleted that. We can talk about that in another tutorial. Uh, so let's go and rewrite that. Um, can't even remember what we've written now. Would you like to withdraw from your checking or savings account? Would you like to, let's zoom in on this. Withdraw from your checking or savings account. 
And then what we want to do is provide our customer with some options. So right down here, we can actually provide our customer response. Now we can provide them the ability to provide free text, or we can actually give them a little bit more structure. So we can provide some options and we can go checking and say checking account and then savings account and hit apply. So we've now got two options and then we need to determine what to do next based on what our customer or how our customers has responded. So we can add in a new step down the bottom here. And then rather than just blanketly responding with a particular response, we can actually tell our agent or tell our virtual assistant to go, hey, based on what the customer has responded with, we want you to respond in a specific way. But before we do that, let's actually test out that first step because it's good practice as we're building this up to ensure that we are, or we're going down the right path. So let me just hide myself again. And if we go and hit preview, so we can then go and say, uh, I want to withdraw money. And you can see that our assistant has already recognized our intent. So would you like to withdraw from your checking or savings account? So we're going to hit checking account. It's going to do nothing because we haven't actually gone and done something yet. We haven't actually gone and replied. So let's actually go and provide a response. So now what we need to do is determine what our customer has said. So up here, we can actually provide a condition. So if we take a look at our big flow, so we're going to do something different based on whether or not they choose savings account or checking account. So for our savings account, our virtual assistant is going to respond. Unfortunately, you cannot transfer directly from your savings account for security purposes. Please transfer to your checking account before proceeding. So that's how we want to respond based on whether or not our customer has chosen our savings account in that particular case. And we're going to respond with how much money would you like to withdraw if they've chosen their checking account. We're not going to finish the flow. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to go into deeper detail and finish this out. But for now, let's just take a look at how we can handle this logic. So we've taken a look at our initial condition. So what we're going to then do is apply a condition or determine or take out a specific action based on whether or not our assistant has determined whether or not a condition has been found. So we're going to go up to here and choose with conditions. And see over here, we can grab the variable from the previous part of the conversation. So over here, we can go grab the action variable from step one. So this is that response there. So if we go and select this particular action variable, we're going to get the variable from that particular step. So we're going to get either checking account or savings account. And this is effectively how our customers responded. So over here, you can see if the response from step one equals checking account, and in that particular case, we are going to respond with how much money would you like to withdraw? So we can then go and say, how much money would you like to withdraw? And then based on that, you'd go and continue the flow. Now we'd also want to handle our savings account. So we can scroll on down to new step and we're going to again, apply a condition. So we're going to go over to here and choose with condition. But now we're going to be taking a look at whether or not our savings account has been detected. So we can click this particular variable and we're going to choose savings account. And we are going to respond with whatever's over here. So unfortunately, you cannot transfer directly from your savings account for security purposes. So unfortunately, you cannot transfer from your savings account for security purposes. And then what was the rest of it? Uh, please transfer to your checking account before proceeding. And there we go. And then what we can then do is we're just going to end our action. So right down there, we're going to choose end the action and we'll end this action here as well. So we can then go and test out our virtual agent. And it should have already trained because it's pretty quick. All right, so let's start. Let me hide myself. So right over here. So we can choose, uh, I want to withdraw money. And you can see that it's already uh, given us a couple of options. Would you like to withdraw from our checking account or our savings account? So we're going to choose savings account now and take a look at that. Unfortunately, you cannot transfer from your savings account for security purposes. Please transfer to your checking account before proceeding. Again, we can test this out. So I want to withdraw 
draw money. And then we can choose, let's choose our checking account. So let's test it out. So we can choose our checking account and take a look. How much money would you like to withdraw? And then we might go down the rest of the logic flow. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to finish this off in a future tutorial and we'll handle some more complex logic. Now we could also choose um, what locations do you have in Sydney CBD. And take a look, it's also detected our other intent. So our nearest store in Sydney CBD is 100 George Street, Sydney. So really quickly, we've been able to build a virtual agent in what is that, under 15 minutes. Now, if you'd like to build out the rest of this flow, by all means, do let me know in the comments below. Now, the nice thing about this is that it is completely hosted. So really, all you'd have to do from here is actually go over to your, to your deployment. Uh, when we go to, uh, where are we? Under live environment. Oh, actually, it's under publish. Actually, my bad. It's actually under integrations. And we can actually go to web chat. And this will actually give us the scripts that we need to embed it inside of our website. Now, if you'd like to see a full-blown integration or me showing you how to actually build up a lightweight app, again, let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions, comments, again, hit me up. I'm more than happy to help. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to see a bit more stuff on what's an assistant, do let me know. I'd love to show you some of the stuff that I get to build for clients, some of the different types of things that are possible. There is so much awesome stuff possible, particularly when it comes to the new or the next generation uh, voice models and text-to-speech, speech-to-text models. They're crazy good now. Anyway, besides the point, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, comments, or need a hand, be sure to drop me a comment in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Peace. Yeah, my card's still blocked, guys. I still don't have a replacement. How am I gonna hit up cocktail up?